This video is an overview of DNA replication. And DNA replication occurs via a semi-conservative mechanism. And so the way that works is these, this is the double-stranded DNA helix shown in blue here. And those two strands separate from each other. So the, the base pairs uh, come apart. They're at their hydrogen bonds. And each of those strands then codes for a new strand of DNA. And the new strand is shown in yellow here. So the, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called DNA polymerase 3. And DNA polymerase 3 specifically adds uh, new bases onto the 3' prime end of an existing strand of DNA. And so here is the template strand shown in blue, um, just a simplified version. We just have the bases here. And uh, here, is an, here is the 3' prime end of an existing strand. The OH uh, is available for a bond. Okay, and the new uh, nucleotide will come in. This is a nucleotide triphosphate. It's three phosphates. And DNA polymerase will then connect this phosphate, phosphate with this oxygen, uh, forming a phosphodiester bond. And these two other phosphates are removed at that point. And in fact, the breaking of that high energy bond is what provides the energy for this reaction. So the way DNA replication occurs is constrained by uh, the capabilities of this enzyme DNA polymerase. So the two really key uh, constraints are listed here. So the first one is that DNA polymerase can only synthesize a new DNA strand in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So in other words, new bases can only be added on the 3' prime end of a, of a strand. And so this really limits the way, uh, the way things can happen at a replication fork. So here's a place where uh, this is a replication fork. The double-stranded DNA is here, and then the two strands that have separated are shown in blue. And as replication occurs, this will continue to unwind over to, uh, to the left. So one of these strands can uh, form in what's called a continuous manner. So this is the leading strand, and the new strand is going to be anti-parallel to the old strand. So, the, so this one goes from the old strand goes 5 prime to 3 prime um, in, from left to right. And so the new strand is going to be going from right to left. And it's going to be synthesized, continually synthesized toward that replication fork. And so as those DNA strands uh, open, you just synthesize more at the end. The other strand is much more complicated. And so this is called the lagging strand. And because we need to synthesize 5 prime to 3 prime, it has to be synthesized from left to right or away from the replication fork. So uh, the way this happens is the DNA polymerase will get on, will synthesize a little bit, and then it will hop back and synthesize a little bit more, hop back again, and synthesize yet again. So it synthesizes that the lagging strand in these short pieces. The other limitation of DNA polymerase 3 is that it cannot start a new strand de novo. It can't start cold. Okay, it has to extend an existing strand of nucleotides. So the way that the cell gets around this problem is by using something called an enzyme called primase. And so primase actually makes a little piece of RNA that is complementary to the DNA strand. So primase comes in, makes this little RNA right here, shown in red, and then the DNA polymerase 3 can jump on here and synthesize, continue that existing strand, synthesizing uh, a, D a new DNA strand, which is shown in yellow. Okay, and so for this lagging strand, which is at the top here, right, primase is going to make the primer, DNA polymerase 3 comes and makes and makes that strand, and then it will hop on back and find this new RNA primer and extend that one as well.
Okay, so that is shown down here. So now you have two of these short, short uh, fragments. These fragments are called uh, Okazaki fragments, and they tend to be somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 nucleotides long. Um, and they, there's still a problem here, right? So there's a little bit of RNA mixed in with that, with that DNA strand. That needs to be removed. And so the way this happens is with another enzyme called DNA polymerase 1. Okay, DNA polymerase 1 comes in, finds that RNA, chews it away, and can add uh, DNA to take its place. Okay, it can now add DNA, so uh, DNA pol polymerase 1 is also constrained by having to add to an existing strand, but at this point, you've got another Okazaki fragment here, and so you can just extend that existing strand. Okay, and then there's one final problem once DNA polymerase 1 completes its job, and that is that there's still one little one little place where you don't have that phosphodiester bond at the very end end part. And so another enzyme called DNA ligase comes in and fixes that up. It just, just uh, makes that phosphodiester bond. For the leading strand, it will also need an RNA primer to get started, but once it gets started, it'll, it can keep on going. Okay, there are a number of other enzymes that are really important in this process of DNA replication, and I just want to go through some of these other, uh, other important functions. So one of the prob problems that happens during replication is as you open up those two strands, um, this DNA that is still part of the double helix is going to get supercoiled together. Now, uh, this is a problem that needs to be fixed because you can't have it just continuing to get more and more coiled up. And so there's an enzyme that comes along, it's called topoisomerase, and uh, there's are a number of different topoisomerases. One of them is named DNA gyrase, and that's why this figure is, is, is calling it DNA gyrase, gyrase. What it does is uh, these these enzymes just make little cuts in the DNA and let it unravel, let, let that those supercoils relax, and then it will ligate it back together again. Another really important enzyme is called helicase. Helicase is shown here in green, and it separates those two strands of DNA uh, by disrupting the hydrogen bonds between the bases. Once those strands are separate, once they're single-stranded, uh, something else, other protein comes along called single-stranded binding protein. Uh, these are shown in white, and what this does is it just stabilizes that single-stranded DNA. Normally, it would just want to re-anneal with, with you know, its, its uh, complementary strand, but this kind of prevents that from happening. There's another enzyme called the beta-clamp, it's called the beta clamp in prokaryotes, and the same enzyme in eukaryotes is called PCNA. So this is a very important uh, protein to keep DNA polymerase acting processively. And so what does that mean? So it binds onto DNA polymerase 3, so that's shown right here. It's and on, on both of these uh, DNA polymerase molecules, and it uh, it's kind of like a taskmaster. It keeps that DNA polymerase from falling off of the DNA. So normally without the beta clamp, DNA polymerase 3 would go maybe for 100 bases, and then it would fall off. And so uh, beta clamp keeps it on, keeps it going for a long period of time. Finally, uh, chromatin, chromatin assembly factor, or CAF1, is very important during replication, but it's only important in eukaryotes. Um, it's involved in uh, putting the nucleosomes onto the new DNA. Now, so only eukaryotes have nucleosomes, prokaryotes do not. Um, the nucleosomes will come off of this part of DNA that's being unraveled, and so these old nucleosomes plus some new nucleosomes as well um, will be formed by CAF1. So these are made up of, of individual histone proteins, um, and then CAF1 uh, is the thing that loads them onto these new strands of DNA. Okay, so to summarize uh, this, 
there's a whole big complex of proteins uh, which are involved in DNA replication. And this is sometimes called the replosome. It's like a big machine. Um, it has two DNA polymerase enzymes, one for the leading strand, one for the lagging strand, and all of those additional kind of accessory proteins that we talked about. Um, replication of the leading and lagging strands occurs at the same time, and su somewhat surprisingly, those two um, DNA polymerase molecules actually are linked together. And so, you know, one of them is going in one direction, one's going in the other direction. How is this possible that they actually are linked together? So it turns out that the, uh, the lagging strand has to kind of loop out uh, during this process. Um, the final point I want to make is that replication is amazingly, amazingly fast. A thousand nucleotides per second in E. coli.